Hello guys, welcome to FM Scout. Today you're with me, Dazza FM. If you don't know who I am, please head into the description. There's a link to my channel there and a link to my Twitter. If you head over to my channel, you're going to get all sorts from Let's Plays, from Football Manager Challenges, from Football Manager Experiments, just everything based on Football Manager. It's a great place to be and some great content over there, so please go and hit that subscribe button. But today we're doing an in-depth guide here on FM Scout for the Greek Super League. So let's get into it. So guys, we sit here today with a little guide going into the Greek Super League. In my opinion, one of the most underrated leagues in Football Manager and has been for a good few years. And I'm going to explain today why I think that is and why Greece is a great place to manage in in Football Manager. As you can see, first of all, in the competition reputation, Greece sit at a 14th definitely room for improvement if you can get a team doing well in europe you'll be able to bring that competition reputation right up and get higher and higher greece i've never really had a team that i've had a, have been really powerful in european football so this is your chance to make that happen with a team from this league greece have had a lot of financial troubles over the past few years and that's definitely came in to the super league with teams not getting big transfer budgets, you definitely have to look into bringing through your youth. You need to keep an eye out for bargains and your scouting has got to be so good because you don't get much money for scouting. So when you do scout, you need to make sure that you're getting the right players in because the money is tight. You've got to make the right decisions. So if you like bringing through youth, if you like working with the youngsters and you have an eye for a bargain, this is definitely the place for you. Right, let's see three teams that I think would be a great save in the Greek Super League. Okay, so team number one, we have, of course, Olympiakos. I know it's a bit of an obvious one, but on my channel, I did a Greek masterclass and it was brilliant. Being these is so fun. You have the opportunity to go out, win the league in your first season, get a bit of confidence and you also have the chance of making the group stages of the Champions League. This is something that the board will definitely want you to do. A Winning the league is a must. I think you'll need to get through to the semi-final of the cup or even the final and win it in the uh, domestic comp competition. And they'll definitely want you to get through the group stages in the Champions League. So again, a massive fun save, mostly for me because of the Europe. You should be winning the league with ease, so that shouldn't be a problem in your first season. If you definitely bring in a couple of extra players, uh, get the right buys, you should walk the league pretty comfortably. But the Champions League is what the Greece Olympiakos fans want. They want you to start building that reputation that sits at three and a half star. It's only at a national level. They want it to become European. They want to become the next Barcelona, the next powerhouse of European football. With you in charge, it is a great task for you to do. It's a great long-term save and you can definitely, definitely achieve it with this team. You won't get much money in the first season, but after winning the league, a good cut run and the Champions League group stage, after the second season, you will definitely get around, I would say, around about the 10 million mark to work with, which would be a great improvement on what you would get from the first season. So, number one choice for me would, of course, be Olympiakos. The next one is AEK Athens. These are one of Olympiakos's main rivals, as they are both from Athens, of course. So, can you knock them off the top? with their local rivals. This would be a great save and one the fans would love you for. Their reputation, again, sits at three and a half uh, star. They are in the European Champions Cup, so again, a chance of going through to the group stages of the Champions League. And if you can make it and Olympiakos don't, the fans will love you. Again, not much of a budget, same as you do with most of these teams. You are gonna to have to be tight on cash. But you do have two of the best players in the Greek Super League, in my opinion. One of them being their key player, as you can see on the right, Sergio Aroa. He's a good young striker and a very good player on this game. Teams from the Premier League and that may try and snap him up for around about the 7 to 10 million mark in the opening season. So if you do sell him, use that money wisely to build and try and lock Olympiakos off the top or keep him and build the team around him. And a third choice for me is Panfinaikos. 
This team, I think in the last 20 years, are the only team to knock Olympiacos off the top for two of them years. They've won it uh, twice in the last 20 years. They sit at a three and a half star reputation as well. They're in the Europa League, but this is definitely a team you can build on. At the start of the season, they do start on negative two points due to a fact of a crowd. Um, they couldn't control their crowd at one of the games, so they got minus two points. So it adds that bit of an extra task onto this save. Trying to knock off the likes of Olympiacos, PAOK and AEK Athens. These are, I think, about four favourites to take the title, even with starting on negative two. Once again, the transfer budget is going to be thin. So you're going to have to look to your youth, bring through your youngsters, get them on a good training regime, ready to take Europe and Greece by storm. These are my third choice in the Super League. But any of these three teams are a really, really good save. Not just domestically, but to be able to take them to the next step in Europe, which is what the Greece fans really, really want now for their league. If you are looking for a Greek Super League extra challenge, how about newly promoted side Apollon? These are, with the bookies, 1,000 to 1 to win the league and one of the favourites to get relegated in the first season. So in your first season, you just want to stay up, build a solid team, get a tactic that works. They're only at 2.5 star reputation. And they're not in no continental competition. So you have no need to worry about any other competitions. Just focus on that survival and building a young squad ready for in you know two, three, maybe four seasons, ready to be competing for their European spaces and ready to be competing with the likes of Olympiacos and AK Athens. So if you're after that extra tough challenge in Greece, this is definitely a team for you. If we look into the Greek Super League rules, guys, there's not much difference between most leagues around Europe. There's 16 teams in the league and you have to play each other twice, which means you'll play 30 games throughout the season. Of course, it's three points for a win and a single point for a draw. In each game, you get seven subs to be named on your bench, but you can only use three. There's a maximum of five non-EU players. And you have to obviously register the players when the game tells you, but you can only have five non-EU players in your squad registration. You, If you're winning the league or you and another team are joint on point, it then goes to the results between the two teams. Then it goes to goal difference, and if it really has to, it will go to goal scored. The bottom two teams from the league are relegated into the Greek B League. And of course, they'll be replaced with two of the with the champions of the B League and the runners up of the B League. Right, a very important one for me is the European qualification. Obviously, with the teams that we've said that would be good saves, you want to have good European journeys as well as good domestic journeys with them. So, this is the continental qualification ruling for the Greek Super League. One team will qualify for the Champions League for the, in the third qualifying phase. One team qualifies for the Champions League in the best place second qualifying phase one team qualifies for the europa league in the third qualifying round and two teams qualify for the europa second qualifying round this is of course depending on who wins the greek cup uh, of course it's one match ban after four yellow cards that's a uh, i think in the premier league it's five so that's um a nuance you need to be a bit careful watch that discipline because that can easily get you match bans and after that it's one match ban for every three additional yellow cards and one match ban for a red card when you load up the game guys you will get the transfer window from the 1st of july all the way up to the 31st of august again same as most leagues around the in europe here we are guys with the past winners, the past runners up and the past third places over the last, well, many years since the league began. And as you can see in the last 20 years, Olympiacos have been pretty unstoppable. As we said, only dropping the league twice to Panthiacos within the last 20 years. That was in 2003 to 2004 and 2009 to 2010 where Panthiacos was the winners. And... Even in 2009-2010, Olympiacos didn't even come in the top three. And in when the Panthiacos went in 03-04, they was the runners-up. But in the last 20 years, they've been pretty much unstoppable and have hands down won it easily. 
as you can see in the runners up in the past 20 years Panthiarchos's name and AEK Athens. Two more teams that we talked about have been challenging Olympiarchos. We're getting as close as they can to them. And again, in the third place, you'll see the same teams, Panthiarchos and AEK, always around about there. So that's your usual top three. So trying to break that mould is another great challenge. Can you even bring like a mid-table team up through, break that top three mould and then carry on through Europe? Getting some Greece success in Europe is for me one of the biggest challenges on FM, especially with the transfer budgets that you get to start with. It's definitely one who, if you want a long-term save and you want to do well domestic there and you want to try and build for a Europe team, this is definitely the place to be.